Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to do a Polo Pony English saddle. Okay, a um, little bit different from a standard English saddle. There's no knee blocks, there's no extra padding. Um, pretty much stripped down, very lightweight. So um, that's what we're going to make. And uh, this is the pattern. So we'll start with the, um, the flaps and skirts. This is Skyver or something very, very thin. If you wanna do faux, um, you can do like a faux suede um, or a faux leather uh, to do this part. Um, I would use a chrome tan or two, three ounce tooling leather here. Again, again, if you wanna do faux, I would use a thicker fabric here, like a faux leather um, <clears throat> right here, but a thicker one than this. Um, there's not going to be any stitching detail. It's really, really simple. Then you have, I'll turn this sideways so you can kind of see the pieces uh, really quickly. Um, but what you have is your aluminum can, uh, which is a really nice, inexpensive material. Um, you have your padding. I would just use a craft felt, but you could use a suede that's the same thickness as a craft felt, either one. Um, or you can use that uh, really small uh, foam. Uh, craft foam that they make, you know, like magnets on and everything on. Um, Skyver for the girth wrap. So we're going to do the wrapped girth. Um, and then I would use two, three ounce. I would only use a two, three ounce or a leather lace for these three pieces here. Uh, two, three ounce uh, because you want to be able to skive it, but you want it strong for your billets. And these billets I made a little bit longer than the other English saddle. Um, I like them better, longer. Um, so there you go. That is what the pattern looks like. I'm not going to make you sit through me cutting out all of these parts and pieces. I'm just going to go ahead and get them cut out and then we'll continue on with assembly. Hey, I like to have a little plastic baggie with all of my stuff in it. Um, this stuff has been skived. It's been dyed. So all this is dyed. Um, after it's been cut out. So I am putting the pieces in the piles of, you know, where they go. So there's the seat or the tree, um, and then there's the uh, flaps, and then there's the billets at the bottom. So that's basically what I did is I just laid those out. We're going to start with the tree. And uh, I'm using my duckbill or toothless uh, platypus uh, pliers here to shape the tree along that line, pulling it downward so that um, that pommel is raised up. And then the shape of the tree is kind of important, so spend your time on it. Here I'm going to roll that front because that would have a, a roll in it. And I'm going to help shape the seat by rolling that back as well. And I'm just using a stylus for both of those. Now we're going to take that piece of uh, felt or craft foam or whatever you picked uh, for the uh, padding. I'm going to go ahead and glue between those lines and put that in place, especially up there at the front. That's important. And then um, this is your, uh, yeah, that front's very important. Okay, now we're going to put on the, uh, the seat cover, and we're just going to glue it to the sides. Don't glue it to the felt. You'll get funny bubbles or buckles, so just don't. Just right there, pull it tight. Both sides, get that centered so that uh, indent in the front should be right a little bit further in front of the aluminum. Um, get those side pieces on. That helps keep it in place. And we like to get those covered. They might be seen. Shouldn't be if you do it right. Okay, now right there in the front, pulling those in. Um, to cover the very front. Now we're going to put some piping there so it doesn't actually have to be perfect, but as best as you can. Then we do the sides. We're going to pull those tight, tight. Right like that. And then um, it should, on both sides, as we get smaller, it's going to uh, buckle a little bit, be a little bit too big. And that's why you get those two, um, I mean, we'll cut them off, but see how I purposely made those little darts. And now we're going to work on pulling it 
back to get rid of, you want to smooth it. You want no wrinkles here in the back. Um, Skyver works really well. Now, this is a really nice Skyver too that I have. So um, it's hard to find, but once you start working with it, then it just becomes a treasure hunt to find more. Um, Rio Rondo might have some small pieces. I, they're probably too small to do a seat, but for a lot of other things. All right. And so any place where a dart is made, I use my platypus to flatten it really well. And now we're going to do, um, we need two of these straight pens to make the stirrup bars. So these that I'm using, they're an inch and a half long. You could probably go down to an inch and a quarter, uh, but I have an inch and a half. And so I pulled those out because we'll need them. And I'm trimming because I wanted that glue to set up before I do this. Trimming any of the excess at this point. So whatever it takes to trim it, you want to get rid of the bulk. In this case, I would just use my wire cutters because these are still strong enough to do that. I do sharpen them. All right. Now we're going to have to put on our sides. And so um, they can get a little warped after dying. And so I was just working them a little bit to get them flat again. Now this is thin enough that I don't have to skybe along the edge there. Um, but if you're just thicker, you're going to want to skybe right where it presses into the seat there. You see, it's there's a perfect shape. It fits in there perfectly. And uh, all the way from the front to around the back, I'm not doing the tails yet. So we're just going to make sure we cover those tree um, arms, and then that's that's what it looks like. Now we need to make sure we have holes for our pins, and you'll see that every saddle has these pins here. They're not pins; they're bolts. Um, we're going to take advantage of that to use that also to make um, the stirrup bars. So put it into that hole. It should have been pre-punched from the pattern. 90 degree, um, about three teeth on my plier. So just enough that it's snug against the wire. And then we do two bends. We're going to do how that works. So you end up with like a Z in there. And that point is that you have your stirrup bar that comes uh, right where they um, flap in the tree, there's a gap there, and then bend it so that you can do what I'm doing here, and that's to tuck the tail in. And again, 90 degree bend so that it fits tight when you pull it through. And then we make that Z pattern. So that stirrup bar is there, and then see how it will fit snugly into that. It does take some doing, but it's the best solution I've found to reduce the bulk when doing the stirrup bar. Uh, my English saddle uh, pattern tree, my English saddle video, which is about four hours long, goes through this a lot uh, slower. So there you go. That is your tree. All right, now we're going to move on to the lower flaps, or the flaps. I'm all here because there's absolutely nothing else I have to do to them. I'm just working it to get them to flatten. Um, and I'm also working all of the uh, girth pieces. It's good to work that leather uh, to get it to, you see there's a little bit of curl there, so I'm just going to kind of work it just to flatten it. And it's just because the dye got it wet. So here's our lower flaps. Now we're going to go ahead and glue those padding pieces right along the upper edge, upper front edge. So you get the seat along the gullet and then around the front. And that's all the padding you have on this. It's very little padding. Um, and now we're going to put a little extra for the seat. And you want it to hang over just a little bit. That, that rounds the edge. Now we're going to put on the, wow, I did both at the same time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, 
There we go. Put that piece on. It should match the back and the bottom. So that little corner there is your matching point. That 90 degree corner is your matching point. Now here, we're going to kind of work it a little bit to make sure I can pull that around the padding so nobody will see that black belt, okay? That's around the front, very important to go ahead and close that up so nobody sees it, because that is something that would be seen. That's what I'm doing right here. So I'm really just pulling the skyver up over the edge of the leather. And I guess I trim if you need to. Apparently there I needed to trim. Um, a lot of this is experience. Don't trim until you know you need to trim, so I wouldn't do it on your first saddle. But as you get better at it, you might find that something gets stretched, doesn't fit. Okay, now we're doing along the gullet, right there. <laughs> Making adjustments as I go. That's, that's how you get better tack. Let's go ahead, if you have to make an adjustment, make it when you see the adjustment needs to be made. Don't wait, because once it's assembled, you can't make those adjustments. Okay, so fitting that right in there. And now I'm just taking that little tail piece off. And it'll be a different size every time, so that's why I can't remove from the pattern. So it depends upon the fabric or the leather that you're using. Okay, so now we're going to roll this. You can pre-roll it like I did. I would like to pre-fit a lot of stuff, make sure that I, you know, I have it right before I glue it. So we're going to I make little darts. There's little darts I'm making there to get that to smooth as much as possible around the edge. And then I even flatten it with the platypus. And that helps to tighten it up. So if you see the edge, there's no wrinkles along the edge. That's the point here. So Get just enough. Love my white glue. It's Aileen's tacky glue. And so here I'm using a stylus to help me make those darts, however many you need. And then we'll go ahead and again use those platypus. Now they're toothless, so they're not going to leave any uh, tooth impressions behind. So that's important. Okay, once the glue is set up, then I can cut away all that extra dart material that gets rid of the bulk. And a little bit on that tail, just the amount of um, where it isn't overlapped. So I was trying to show you by doing that, we have um, no um, buckles or wrinkles. All right, and that's what your lower flaps look like. Now there are those extra pieces um, that I'm showing you now. You could do this here. If you had trouble getting the seat wrinkle-free, you can use that piece. Not necessary with mine. You have another piece here. If you have trouble getting rid of the wrinkles, you could put those there. Didn't need it on mine, so um, you don't necessarily have to have it. All right, so now this is the piping. And um, the piping can either be rolled or folded. Um, I prefer the roll for... Um, a lot of saddles, uh, the English ones. Cut back, I do a fold. Uh, but if it, if it's thin enough, you kind of want to roll it because you need a finished edge. So um, this was slightly rolled, and now I'm going to um, I'm going to cut these uh, little darts out because this is the inside the gullet. We're going to cover up the rest of that aluminum can. Um, so this will help it go make that turn around that piece that's underneath the glue bottle right now. That's the piece. And so we're going to glue it all the way around. You want it as centered as possible. Um, It just makes it a little easier not to have glue all over the place. I have enough glue problems as it is. And I just made it even. doesn't really need to be. Nobody's going to see that piece. 
Okay, so now we can start putting everything together, but we're going to start with the seat, that gullet piece, the um, billets, we need those, and the um, upper flaps. So, you need to do your uh, stirrup leather. Um, this is your holder. And um, so they don't really have them. They really do just like a vertical stirrup. Uh, some people prefer to have the holder. So I left that in the pattern. Um, if you know what I mean, then you don't need to do this as far as the vertical. So I'm just uh, making a snug pair of uh, those um, stirrup keepers or holders. And um, those slits are in the pattern, so you have to do that ahead of time. You want to make sure you do two of those, the one on each side. Um, this is just uh, a lace. It's a leather lace that I'm using because it's uh, 3 30 seconds is good. You can do 1 8 as well. Um, 3 30 seconds is just, it's just a little bit narrower. Um, and so I just find it looks a little bit better. So then I'm tucking in what I'm going to use for stirrup leather, which is also leather lace in there, um, just to make sure I get it tight, but not so tight I can't actually get any leather in there. All right. That's good to have that done now. If you forget, it gets to be a pain later on. All right, so now that that's had a chance to set, we're going to continue with the assembly. Tuck those uh, arms from the tree into the slots that were pre-cut for them, okay? Now here I'm doing them one at a time. Make sure you get that front so that it's even. So the flaps should not stick out in front of the um, the tree should be even right there in the front. Try to show you nice and flush. Okay, now that um, I'm clamping it just because I'm I'm working with it, and the glue sets up relatively quickly, but um, it's just better when you're working with it; it doesn't slip around all over the place. Uh, otherwise you'd have to wait like 15 minutes for each step. So here I'm just going to go ahead, make sure that's centered because you want it to be the same on both sides. And go ahead and clamping that into place. And uh, this is that other piping piece. There's two piping pieces. And this one goes in the front. And so you can roll it or you can fold it. Oops, glue. Um, so this is, this is, like I said, a roll. I'm not folding it, I'm actually trying to roll it so that the front side gets rolled over. Um, but it looks like I decided not to do that. I folded it. Nice. Well, that's so much easier. All right, so the glue should have set up enough that I can um, start putting the billets right there in the hole. There's actually a hole right there made just for the billets. And get this piece ready as well. I just do the back part. I get in a few of my fingers as it is. Um, so tuck that in there. And then you're going to match the front. Match the front. And then make sure it's centered towards the back. See that? All right, now we're going to take our piping piece. Don't need any cuts on this one. Glue. Actually, if you can see the glue, it's probably too much glue. You don't need that much. All right, we're going to fold it in half. Tuck it right there. Now we're going to contour it around the shape of the front. And then we're going to have it kind of slightly disappear. Yeah. Glue dries pretty fast. And you want it to disappear the same place on both sides.
So sometimes it doesn't look right. He said, fix it now. Doesn't look right, fix it now. So we don't need very much. See how it's just the front that we did. Because it moved it around, the glue had already set up, so put more glue on there. There we go. Yeah, I'm just shaping it. It's always good to, you know, like I said, play with it. Last thing we need to do are the lower flaps. We do these one at a time. And you want to make sure that you're back behind. And the seat should fit right there. So. You want to make sure that you don't see the flaps in the front. They're about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And I have them clamped because I need the glue to set up before I move to the next stage. I, I glued down that little tail so that top clamp is holding down that little itty bitty tail that has no padding in it. And that's totally normal. If you've ever seen the back of an English saddle, it's um, that usually gets tucked under the piping. Of course, we can't do that in miniature because we're not doing the sewing. Okay, so now we want to match. See how we have an open gullet? So you don't want them too close. The seat comes over. that that back is the way I want it to look. Nice open gullet right down the spine of the animal. And now we can glue down those little tails. And we're going to glue them right on top of the piping. So Doing that on both sides, gluing down the pipe, gluing them down on top of the piping. And adding glue any place I need to in order to look right on the sides there. That could be glued down a little bit or right there much of a gap, so I'm going to go ahead and open the hole I want to close, make sure that glue is in there, and then we'll clamp that. So you want to make all these little adjustments. So if I wanted to, I could do that if I needed to. I don't need to do that. And you would trim off the excess if you use that little piece. Okay. Just trying to get rid of the sharp edges. Rounding it. These are the little things I don't even know if they show you in, in books anymore. Um, so that is what your, uh, your saddle looks like. Um, you do not, um, those other pieces that I showed you, you don't need. Now here we're doing the Ds. You're going to need this because you will have a martingale on a um, polo saddle. This is 1 16th inch leather lace with 1 16th inch Ds. Or you can, if you want, use jump rings, like a three or uh, um, as big as a five uh, millimeter jump ring if you don't have the Ds. Okay, we're going to tuck that right in there. There is a place for it right under the pin. Technically, it would be attached 
by that pin. That bolt would be holding that in. Um, so you want it to be as close to that as possible. And then, but pointing forward, just tuck it in there so it's glued. There you go. Lovely. So next step would be uh, would be stirrups. I'm just checking it, making sure that it's, you know, symmetrical, um, giving it some rounding. Now this leather deals really well with just being, you know, pulled. Um, uh, we'll have to put it on a, a, a model and uh, train it. Um, but now we're just going to do uh, stirrup leathers. Okay, so now you need stirrups. These are Rio Rondo, the pewter. So, uh, got some leather lace. Now I made this leather lace. And uh, I'm measuring it. And it'll be three times whatever that length is. So that's actually probably short, but uh, you only want it really to go to the belly of the, of the horse. If it goes past the belly, um, rider is considered too tall for the horse. Um, so we're going to put a buckle on one side of each of these. Um, I'm using a 332nd leather lace that I made. Okay, so I, I have a sheet that I created uh, in a graphics program um, with so that I can just like sticky glue it to some leather and use it as cut lines then that works for me everybody has their own way they have to find out what works for you um, so these are only about maybe six inches long you don't have to do like a whole spool of lace you just need the strips and so these are about six inches long and I just needed to cut them in a six inch length. So now I have um, my pointy end and I'm going to go about, um, well you can put your holes wherever you want. It would not go all the way to the end. This is one of those fallacies because if they did then your stair leathers are too short. Now these are the holes for the buckles that um, determine the length of your stirrups. So don't go hog wild with the I don't know. You could do whatever the trend is. It doesn't matter. Um, but just telling you, in the real world, you would not be as far towards the end as you think. I'm using some uh, rounded pliers because they don't have teeth and they're narrow. And I'm going to tuck it under that stirrup bar. And then I'm going to pull the, the strap over so it's underneath. Yeah. yeah pull a little hard there. Uh, underneath and then over. So from under, over. And then uh, buckle to whatever length. And then tuck it into your little steric keeper. There you go. That's probably too much sticking out of that steric keep, uh, the stirrup leather keeper. I'm going to do the same for the other side. So we're going to go under. And then pull it over. And usually the tip gets ruined when I do that because I can be very brutal. So I always end up snipping a little off just to make sure I get rid of the ruined end. And do it at an angle. Get a buckle. The buckle goes um, where that stirrup bar is, so you t push it up towards the top. Uh, there should be a pocket in there now for the um, for that buckle. This takes this takes away a lot of the bulk of some other designs. Okay, I am going to do a satin sheet because I dyed this. Now it's a good dye because it, it's not on my hands, so my hands are not in any way dyed. So there's no transfer. This is a good dye. It's a professional dye, pro dye. Um, and that's what I like is pro dye. But I can't always get it. So whether I use pro dye or not, I'm still going to seal it. And it also makes it easier to clean. Uh, just add a protection. So make sure you get your sealer coat. Help keep the uh, dye from transferring to your model or to the white pad if you want to put a pad on underneath. 
Okay, so this English saddle is a modified version of my other English saddle pattern. I have four hours, it's four hours of instructions on how to put that one together. Nice and slow, not quick like this. Difference is this one doesn't have the knee pads, it doesn't have nearly as much, um, doesn't have as much detail. But uh, there you go, I'm just gonna let this dry and then I'll put it on a saddle or a model and I'll train it. So thank you for spending time with me today. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends about the channel, and have yourself a really good day.